and I want to talk a little bit about the 19th century history of this property. This property was owned by the Kent Iron Company, and it was used to make charcoal uh, to feed the iron furnace that's located on the Sloan Stanley Museum property in Kent. Um, and throughout most of the 19th century, Kent Iron operated all throughout Litchfield County, Northwest Connecticut, and they produced iron for guns, for locomotives, and for cannons, uh, including cannons that were used in the Civil War, and also for locomotive manufacturers that existed in um, Rhode Island and New Jersey and New York. So for much of the 19th century, this land was cut periodically and they stacked the logs into big piles and burned slow fires to reduce the uh, wood to charcoal and then carted the charcoal away. And it's been said that if you traveled through this area um, you know, 150 years ago, all the hills would have been stripped. If they weren't used for farming, they were used to make charcoal for the iron company. So that was the early history of this property. And if we fast forward to the middle of the 20th century, my parents, Eleanor and Howard, uh, lived in Bethel, Connecticut. And um, my mother, after graduating from Danbury High School, went to work for an attorney named Bob Sullivan. And his uh, law firm, small law firm, was located right off the green in New Milford. Uh, my mom used to uh, drive up here, uh, and she said in the early days it was a dirt road, what's now Route 7, so <laughs> it was quite different then. In fact, she referred to it as Tobacco Road because it had so many of the shade leaf grown tobacco right. plants. And what happened was our grandfather died suddenly in 1957, so my folks relocated temporarily to Pennsylvania. My dad said it would only be six months. It ended up being nine years because my <laughs> grandfather had a business there and he was running the business until he could sell it. Uh, but um, Mr. Sullivan apparently liked my mom because he kept calling her up and saying, gee, there's this property for sale in New Milford. You should check it out. It's a really good deal. So we ended up actually buying a cabin <clears throat> on Canwood Lake Road South, which is where Mark and I grew up. Uh, and my dad turned it into a house. Um, and my parents would travel back and forth between Pennsylvania, Connecticut, work on the house, swim in the lake, and then go back. Mm -hmm. um, and as we were getting to the point where we were gonna move back here in the mid-1960s, uh, Mr. Sullivan called my mom and said, there's this property on Route 7 that's a really good deal. You should uh, check it out. It's over 100 acres, and I believe the uh, price was $10,000. Now, that was a lot of money in 1964. My parents were investors, though. You know, they liked to see if they could uh, hang on to something and, and let it grow. Uh, but they actually had to borrow on their life insurance to help afford this. And they also involved my aunt and uncle, uh, Jeannie Clifford Banks, who lived in Brookfield. Um, and eventually, my folks bought out the banks. And uh, we owned this property. Uh, my family owned it for over 50 years. Um, we used to come up here hiking quite a bit. It seemed a lot less steep when I was younger. Uh, and also, we cut some firewood up here, but you know, we would try to access it from the road, and when you drive down Route 7, you can see it's pretty steep. I mean, it's really my feeling that this is the perfect use for this property. Uh, it's the way it should be, and I hope people enjoy it and, and get the same uh, kind of fun out of it that we did. When my mom passed away a year and a half ago, Mark talked to me about doing this, and we talked back and forth. That, we found a way to make it happen. I'm so pleased we were able to donate to the Land Trust. It's a very good organization, and I know they'll take care of it. I'm so pleased to hear about the partnership with, uh, with the New Milford Youth Agency. That's pretty amazing, too. So thank you for all your support. All right, and I'll just give a little more history, uh, a little more recent history. Um, so in 1965, my parents uh, uh, moved up. That cabin that Brian mentioned on Canada Lake Road South had turned into a small house. Um, there was still, we had three kids. Uh, a dog and uh, two parents and my mom was working full-time Bob Sullivan got his way and uh, she was working with him again and uh, work continued on that house uh, there were several different additions my father had a lot of free labor from three boys <laughs> we learned a lot about carpentry and digging and getting dirty and all that kind of stuff um, but once that was done my father was getting itchy you know because all he had was a full-time job he was spending 50 hours a week at so he, he found um, a seriously dilapidated house and barn. Uh, seven, it's from the late 1700s on Old Town Park Road right near Hill and Plain School. It li both literally had large holes in the roof, beams were rotten, floors. My brother fell through and cut his leg at one point uh, and that was that's what he decided to do. So in 1971 he bought that. Uh, took five years and we worked our tails off uh, for those five years getting the house ready and then we went to the barn. Moved into that house in 1976 and um, uh, 
<laughs> just uh, one interesting thing. Uh, Twelve years later, after we moved in, my wife and I had a reception in, the, in, in that barn for our wedding. Uh, it was just wonderful. We had 120 people there, lots of music. It was, it was really something. One other detail is there's a sawmill, or at least there was many yeah, years ago, Davis. owned by Robert Davis yeah. on Squash Hollow Road. Mm -hmm. A lot of the timber that was cut to fix up that barn was cut in that sawmill. It wasn't, so. it wasn't just boards, it was big no, like beams, beams and, and yeah, there was, it was some <laughs> serious work. But, um, so while this, all this was happening, my mother was obviously helping with uh, the rehab of the house. She was raising the three kids, had a full-time job with Bob Sullivan, and um, she also had some volunteer efforts. One of them was with the Milford Historical Society, and uh, Bob Sullivan had passed away. Um, she was working with uh, some of his colleagues uh, that uh, the business passed on to. And uh, Ruth was getting ready to move up to Vermont. She was well into her 70s and decided that's where she wanted to be. And there was the original old uh, Hill and Plain School on Sullivan Road, named after Bob Sullivan. Sullivan Farms is right there, named after Bob and Ruth Sullivan. And it was dilapidated, not as bad as um, the house on Old Town Park Road, but pretty bad. And my mother talked Ruth into donating it to the Historical Society. The Historical Society owns that today. And again, free labor comes in. <laughs> it's a lot of work to get that thing fixed up. And uh, we had a, a real nice uh, opening ceremony. It's a classic one-room schoolhouse. Um, so, you know, my parents, you know, really built a life here. Um, they, uh, my dad died in 1994. My mom, as Brian said, uh, late 2015. Uh, they restored some, I think, pretty, pretty interesting uh, and historic old buildings here. Um, so, you know, it didn't take us long to decide that, you know, donating this was the right thing. You know, partially because it's just such a nice place to hike, as I think you'll see, and the youth agency, it sounds like, I haven't been on it yet, has made it even better with an additional spur trail, which I'm really looking forward to going on. But also, you know, you can tell my, my parents were long-term thinkers. So they bought this when they had no money in 1964 as a long-term investment. Who knows what we're going to do with it? Uh, they fixed this, you know, really dilapidated old house. They saved the, um, uh, they, you know, they helped save the uh, old Hill and Plain School. And so, you know, they were long-term thinkers. And if you think about a piece of land donated to a land trust who's dedicated to keep it the way it is forever, it's like the ultimate long-term thing to do. So we thought this was... <laughs> You know, a really good thing to do for my parents. Um, I think uh, a really good thing to do for the town and people who, you know, want to get outside and, and do some hiking. And Weontnag has been really good to work with. Uh, they were a pretty obvious choice for us. One, you know, as Paul said, uh, they're the biggest land trusts uh, here in Connecticut. But we saw what they did with Tory's Cave. You know, really happy with that. We're hoping for the same sort of thing. We really didn't expect in the first six months as much as happened to this property as happened. So that's been great. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the other thing is, which is kind of interesting, is uh, uh, that kind of convinced us is when we were getting serious about donating, uh, we were looking for a lawyer to help us with all the paperwork. And Dave Miles, uh, who my mother worked with for many years, uh, and Dave used to be up at the farmhouse having a beer on the porch, uh, had been on the board of the Weontnog for years and uh, gave us a high recommendation and knew how to work with the people there. So we got it done. Um, very, this is a very happy day for our family. Um, and uh, really happy to have you here. I hope you uh, come up here a lot and enjoy it. I hope lots of other people do. So thank you very much to the Milford Youth Agency. It really means a lot. Right. Right. Okay.